Hi, Jeff here at the Green in the Desert project in the Dead Sea Valley in Jordan, lowest place on earth. This project didn't start like this. We started off with rock and poor dusty soil. Let me show you the main components that made this system work and the living system come alive into an abundant, productive event. Having secure boundary fences was crucial. And we started off with a wire fence and we've ended up with a nice wall, but it's always been essential to be well fenced away from grazing animals. Water tanks have always been a crucial component right from the start and always will be. We started off with a lot of smaller tanks and over time we've ended up with some big tanks. Water does come in from the outside world, some by mains water just a few hours a week if we're lucky and some brought in by tanks and tankers. That's standard in these hot dry deserts. Access tracks through the site have always been essential and we've ended up with nicer and nicer tracks over time, but we've had to define the access throughout the site so that we can work efficiently and get to all the trees that need attention, production and picking. All the harvesting earthworks have been a major component right from the start and we're in the longest swale highest in the site. So it starts at the lowest point on the highest boundary and it goes right through the site from one side to the other. These were constructed on top of rock mounds on contour. Because we had so much rock, we had to do something with the rock and use it as a resource. Now, some rocks were just too big to move, and there's a few large ones around, but majorly the rocks were used on contour to form these swale mounds. So the swales go right through the site. This just happens to be the longest swale. Now you can see here that the swale is built behind a rock wall. It's not a sealed rock wall, it lets the water through. There's a little bit of cement holding the, and concrete holding the rocks in place, but they're just holding up the round rocks that are then backed up behind with an earth mound and a trench that harvests the water. So as you come all the way round along the swale, it's been functioning right from the start of the design. You come to a hole in the wall that picks up water off the road. The rocks are a resource, but initially they just covered all the ground just about. So we had to move the rocks and do something with them. So we put them to work on contour as the foundation of the swale. There are also micro swales all the way through the site between the larger swales. When it rains, and it does rain big in a short period during the winter, we've got to capture everything we can. So the water running down this road hits this speed bump right here, and takes the water sideways past the earth mound and into that hole underneath the wall to feed that long swell. From very early, we started a nursery and it's still running and probably always will be. So we have a great diversity of plants, more diversity all the time being produced. And we're always trialing new plants and trees. And I think we always will be. So it's inevitable that a nursery is a major part of a system to establish 
and extend the success that you achieve. Compost production and chickens have been continuous components on site. So here we have chickens and compost working together. We've been making compost right from the beginning and I think we always will be because it's the engine of fertility for the site. Organic matter is the driver. This is what we're aiming for. Nice, damp, dark soil. And that's all the way across the site. That is the most important part of what we've been trying to achieve. Improve soil fertility. So that's the Green in the Desert site. Before and after. And everything that's worked through to make it a productive desert ecosystem. Now we use exactly these principles to extend over the larger area in our design work. So when we go out on a large acreage, we partner up with some equipment and technology to extend exactly the same systems to stabilize landscape. That I'm gonna to bring to you in another video, but it's been fun going back in history and showing you the present. So the before and after is always good to look at.